Hmm. That's an interesting question, actually. I mean, Marx himself was a complex figure, the early Marx. So you read the philosophical manuscripts and so on. The, you know, this is coming straight out of the French, French and German Romanticism. So the kinds of ideas you find expressed in Humboldt and in the more libertarian side of Rousseau, Rousseau himself was very split. But if you take the libertarian s part of Rousseau, the second discourse on inequality and Humboldt and so on, all of this was, that's the background in which Marx grew up. And if you read the uh, philosophical and manuscripts of the early period, they're immersed in this. So his theory of alienation comes out of this. Uh, work, coerced labor is alienating and counter to human nature precisely for these reasons, for the Humboldtian reasons. Uh, when you get to the later Marx, you know, it's not, it's, I mean, it's sort of like a scholarly debate about whether he changed his mind or just started talking about other things, but uh, anyway, you don't find it any longer. And by that time, Marx, Marxism does become, exactly as you say, very detrimental to this. So you get this idea, which you, you do find in Marx, but he couldn't have believed it, that uh, human nature is just a historical product and people are just malleable. They're made what their culture turns them into. You get this even in people like Gramsci, who was one of the more libertarian Marxists. But this idea that humans are simply formed by the environment and they are nothing but clay, you know, passive clay in the hands of their molders, uh, that's an idea which is very attractive to radical intellectuals because they think they're going to be the molders, of course, and that leads right to the Leninist version of Marxism. And it does become a kind of orthodoxy. Uh, and the earlier views of, are either forgotten or marginalized, although they're certainly there in Marx, and they certainly are in the tradition that he came from. I mean, the, I mean, the Marxists and the behaviorists are right in the same ballpark, the, these kinds of Marxists. Uh, and, and in fact, it's, I think it's a tragedy and a catastrophe that the left uh, has, been, has accepted the idea of humans as uh, historical products simply reflections of their environment. Because what follows from that, of course, is that there's no moral barrier to molding them any way you like. I mean, if humans have no inner nature, if they don't have an inner instinct for freedom, you know, if it's not fundamental to their nature to have free, creative, productive work under their own control, if that's not part of their nature, then why, you know, there's no, there's no moral reason for allowing them that space. You could just mold them into being what you think they ought to be. And you can be the central committee, or you can be the, uh, you know, the, the managers of the corporation, or uh, the directors of a fascist state, or whatever. And it's quite interesting that the, intellectual, the modern intellectuals have mostly have moved in one or the other of those directions, overwhelmingly. Either they're, uh, and in fact, this was foretold in one of the, maybe the only prediction of the social sciences that ever came so dramatically true uh, was uh, Bakunin's discussion of this in the late in the late 19th century. He was sort of arguing with Marx, and it's well before Leninism. But he predicted uh, very perceptively that the rising class of intellectuals are just kind of becoming identified as a class in modern modern industrial societies. Uh, he predicted that they were essentially going to go in one of two directions. Uh, there would be some who would believe that uh, the struggles of the working class would offer them an opportunity to rise and take state power in their own hands. And at that point, he said, they would become the red bureaucracy who would create the worst tyranny that humanity has ever known. Of course, all in the interests of the workers. That's one direction. And he said the others uh, would recognize that you're never going to get power that way. And the way to get power is to associate yourself with what we would nowadays call state capitalism uh, and just become the servants of its ruling class. Uh, and then you become the managers and the ideologues uh, and so on for the state capitalist system. And as he put it, those people will beat the people with the people's stick. In other words, they'll talk about democracy, but they'll really be beating the people with the stick of democracy, which they'll turn into a mechanism of coercion. <laughs>